Sure, getting that first win last week, what was different in the performance compared to what had gone before? We're seeing the game through. Um, we didn't play as well, actually, first half particularly. I thought we were strong in the second half and you know, looked a threat when we needed to and, and took our chances. And, and then seeing the game through defensively with um, you know, a better feel to the organisation going into the, the end of the game. Even after that win, though, obviously off the field matters crop up again as well. And we see reports that new owners coming in could provide you with a sizable transfer budget in January. What do you know about any such thing? Well, it's fair to say there wasn't many quotes in there, so I, I try and stick to the facts. And I haven't, certainly haven't heard anything from the owners at all, and certainly not about transfer budgets. Um, so, uh, as there was no quotes, I would say that as a, a mythical story, like there's many out there, um, until it becomes a fact, then I try, if I can, and concentrate on the facts. Um, and I certainly know no other at this stage. Any plans for you to speak to them in the near future? Um, not from from my point of view. Obviously, I'm always open to speak to whoever, whoever needs to speak to. But no, I haven't heard anything from their side of things. And again, speculation surrounding Jared Brentwright, only just back from injury. What do you make of that? Do you have concerns that someone like Liverpool could come in from in January? No, I think I think we said, uh, or I said, sorry, in the summer that you know any player at Everton Football Club, you know, it's a worldwide market now. It's not just about one play. You know, the way that the game's changed. Um, Everyone, certainly in Europe, maybe maybe the world, but certainly in Europe, you know, the, 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 the transfer sort of situation has opened up across Europe. So it's not a surprise that good players are linked with other clubs. Um, that's just the way it goes, you know, the nature of it. Um, I said in the summer he'd be staying here, he is. Um, so that's good. Was you confident about him staying the entire season? Yeah, I mean, no, no I mean, look, I mean, the, the club has a situation which it will still be looking upon. Um, obviously, if the new ownership does go through, that might change things, you know, financially or the, the viewpoint of where the club is at and where it wants to go. Uh, but we don't know that yet, so we'll have to just wait and see. On the injury front, Coleman, Patterson, are they ready to return? And Chimiti and Brogia, are they on course? No, they're, yeah, they're a bit longer than two. Um, Coleman's a bit longer as well. I mean, not too much longer. We'd, we'd be hopeful over this uh, international period. He gets closer. And Pato is more common sense now. He's out training all the time, but he needs a game programme after being out just around that six-month mark. So, you know, a bit of a longer-term situation. But he's making good progress and he's training regularly. And so far, so good. You took four points off Newcastle last season. 3-0 victory at Goodison Park. Obviously, it was part of that four-game run after the defeat to Manchester United as well. But what do you expect from Newcastle this time around? Just one defeat all season at Fulham, but followed that up, obviously, with a, a very good performance against Manchester City. Yeah, I mean, they're a good outfit. We know that. They've invested well and they're well coached by Eddie. I think they do a good job there. Um, someone I definitely respect in the game. And, you know, they've got some good individuals and, and you know, they're, they're supplying another good season so far. We did do well in both games, I thought, for different reasons away. You know, ended up a, a sort of a, a basketball match at times, but we came out with a, a point there. And at home, I thought we delivered a very good performance. And you know, you know that they can operate in different ways. They they can play, but they often get the ball forward quickly. So you've got to be alive to that because they have pace and on the counter. And you know, they're a good outfit. They've, they've been put together well. But as you said, our record against them was good last season. Um, there's certainly no given reason why we can't replicate that record. But you've got to play well. You know, and, uh, and I think we've got to play well from the start to the finish. I thought we pieced it together. Better the second half last week against Palace, but you've got to do that for the full game. Thanks, Finney. We'll go to Fraser. Um, Sean, you talked about last week saying that it wasn't maybe the best performance, but the grit that the team showed, so the determination was, was largely a part of what, what managed to get you over the line. How much more are you going to show of that now? Well, it was more, it was more seeing the game through, I think, that, that side of things, because after the, the first half, when we were, we were below par, I thought, um, we, we were strong for the, the early part of the set that way. That's quite apparent with, with two very good goals and, and we provided a good performance. It was more seeing the grit side is seeing, seeing the game through at the end. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a much determination to, to do the, the basics, really, the shape of the team, the, you know, the, the hard yards, as I call it, the bit that not, not everyone notices, but certainly your teammates do and certainly myself and the coaching staff do, the organisation and the will and desire to make sure that we looked after ourselves and make good decisions when they, when they were needed. And I thought we did that. So, you know, that's we're trying to piece together or re-piece together because we showed it very strong um, as a group at the end of last season, that ability to op operate in different ways. Sometimes you have to see a game through by shutting it down, which we haven't done as well this season until last week. Sometimes you can play open. Sometimes you can affect teams with that. Sometimes it's counter. Sometimes it's drop back and absorb. You know, how many different ways do you need in the Premier League? Well, usually you need lots of them. And I think we've, we've shown very good signs in other games where we've attacked well, maybe not defended as well. And now it's about, you know, 
bolting it together and, and doing it for 95, 97 minutes, whatever the game offers, and finding different ways of operating to make sure we look after ourselves and win games. And like I say, so I was pleased with that overall against Palace, um, of using them different ways of working to make sure that we did look after ourselves. Obviously, we've got to go, that there, go and do that moving forwards. Uh, and in terms of the confidence in the group, having got that first win, has everybody had a, a bit more of a, a stronger feel this week, a bit of a spring nest? Actually? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's a, it's a strange thing. It's not, you know, confidence is that funny thing that, you know, it's it comes and goes, it ebbs and flows, but mainly you want, you have to have an underbelly of confidence to be a professional footballer. But of course it heightens it when you get a reward. You know, the players, there's been no lack of work um, from the players this season, but, you know, it heightens the work when you do get a performance that can win and you do see it through and you can win. And it reminds some of the players of how different ways uh, to operate can win. So I think confidence, professional confidence, as I call it, in, in what we do, the, the day-to-day work and what they do as a group when the whistle blows. And that's one thing. The individual confidence is obviously something that each player will adapt to, playing well. You know, there are players who have played very well in the previous games. We hadn't won. So they'll actually be confident about their own performance. But bringing that team confidence, and I think winning brings that whole team and whole uh, collective mentality where everyone feels a bit better about life. Thanks, Fraser. We'll go to Julia at Radio Merseyside. Hi, um, yes, Belintram was substituted at half time against Palace. How has he reacted to that this week in training? Yeah, fine. I mean, you know, players, it can happen. He, he was he had a blow, blow par first up, but he's adapting. I've said all these players that we've bought in there, none of them have played in the Premier League regularly, so they're adapting to the challenges of it. And, you know, finding that in game consistency, which I've spoken about endlessly, you know, it's not just about week to week consistency during a game, staying true to the cause. And if it's not your day to be. Say if you're a real talented player, which he is, I think, with the ball technically, if it's not your day to be good at that, then you've got to do the team job. And if both are not operating as well, then sometimes it needs a change. So it's, it's all part of his development and learning about what the Premier League's about. So, yeah, there's certainly no, uh, uh, no uh, question marks other than learn, move forward and we get ready again. Can I just ask the difference between Jared Branthwaite had a game for the under-21s and then came back into the starting eleven? Um, Nathan Patterson has done a couple of hours with the under-21 games. What's the difference there? How long will it take Nathan Patterson to get up to that level to be in the, the starting yeah, eleven? Patterson was a different kind of injury. You know, it, was a, it was quite a serious injury um, on a tendon, which is unusual. Um, needed surgery on a tendon, which is equally, you know, has to be careful um, on the on the recovery. So therefore, it needs more time. Coming back to true fitness, true sharpness, game sharpness, that's six months is a long time to be out. So it's a game's programme rather than one game. He hadn't done as much of the support training. So although he could play a bit quicker than Jared, he hadn't done as many, many hours just on the support side of things as in the sports science uh, support. Jared had obviously had a spell when he came back and was nearly back and then went down again. So all these things have to be calculated. And, and you know, still we, we made a decision on Jared. He felt good. He felt right. And part of we know and he knows is still just w- s- sort of searching for that true fitness and that sharpness. So there's more to it than just literally injury for injury. They're different kinds of injuries and they're treated differently. And the recovery is treated differently as well. Dwight McNeil at the moment nominated for Premier League Player of the Month for September. He's also topping loads of the stat lists, including key passes. He's, he's still only 24 years old yeah have we seen the best of him and how much more is there to come from him no i spoke to him when i first got here about you know what we felt of him obviously i gave him his debut all them years ago and and he's and he's never really looked back he's had a couple of tough spells and i, I appreciate it before i got here he was having a bit of a quiet spell and people were asking questions about him but you know he's he's, he's affected himself not just us affecting him he's affected himself he, he continues to mature as a player he knows we speak to him about other things that we still think he can round himself with um, change of position was something that we've we've talked about a lot since I've been at the club and when and where we could do it and the reasons for doing it and so far it's been productive um, I still think he can operate all across that middle band of the pitch um, but so far he's done very well and it, it looks like excuse me it looks like to me he's enjoying his role as well um, is the, I appreciate there's a, there's a lot of the <coughs> season to go but being out of the bottom three after lots of questions about being in it does it give a slight psychological boost it doesn't to me particularly, but I mean, to the, it, it, it changes the feel of what's going on, you know, and you know yourself, it's, the noise created is very quick. Um, Evan's had a gloomy story for a long time now, so it's an easy story. I've always said that, you know, if we're not winning games, it becomes an easy story and everyone jumps on it very quickly because um, they can roll the story out quickly. And so I think it's more the, the feeling of everything. You know, you come out the bottom four and it just lightens that kind of mood around the, the, the media side, the fan side, the player side even, you know. And it, and it gives a different feel. Now, we've got to capitalise on that because if, if that does affect people, 
then then you want that to go away quite obviously you want them to you know that that fine line between when you've got a pitch of being focused but that freedom to go and play and when that story changes and it softens a bit then that gives a bit more freedom to the players to go and play and you want them to be relaxed but focused when they play so Overall, of course, psychologically for the the fans, and I think for the players deep down, it's nice to be out the bottom three. But it's not a it's a work you know it's not a work done for the season. It's, there's plenty to do, um, and unfortunately, we have been down that end of the table for a few years now. So it's not new ground to the players, but we certainly didn't want to be there, and we still don't. So now we're working to come away from that and, and get clear of that, and then, like I say, find that better days when everyone's a bit more relaxed about it and they can enjoy their football and usually, not always, but usually you find that that brings better results. Thanks, Julian. <coughs> uh, who's next? Will, we'll go to you. Hi, Sean. Um, yeah. Just on Jared, there was a lot of speculation obviously over him in the future. How do they handle all of that talk over the potential legs? All right, I think. I don't really speak to him about it. I don't need to. He's still there. You know, there's no... <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and chatting endlessly about stories in the paper, of which 95% are not true. So there's no point to it, you know. So he, he seems fine. He's, you know, other than being injured, obviously that's been a real blow to him. Um, but he's been fine. In terms of your midfield, you've rotated a little bit and you've had a little bit of, in, of it unavailability. Do you still feel like you're searching for your best two? Do you know your best two or do you think there's different combinations that you will use? No, I think, I think there's different combinations. I think, you know, we're, we're searching for the, the right fitness levels because obviously Ganner had to go away, unfortunately, with a um, you know, family situation, missed a, a pocket of football and Tim's learning about the Premier League. Duke, obviously, is always pretty pretty clear that everyone knows that he can cover the hard yards of a football pitch, so that's without a doubt. Um, Jimmy coming back to true fitness. Um, so, you know, you're sort of looking, piecing it together a little bit and finding the right mixture. Um, you know, it's not an easy task, but they're, they're all good players. So the main thing is to get them all properly fit, Premier League fit, and they're just about getting there now, which is going to be beneficial, I think, moving forwards. Just in terms of Nathan Patterson, he's been here nearly three years now and always focuses on getting fit, but... How determined is he to really nail down that right back bear? Because he has had injuries, maybe been in, in and out of the team. Is it is it his time to really nail that position down? Now? Well, it's all about his time. His time could be whatever. It's about him getting fit and getting his form right to go and play. But the first thing is to get him to that fitness level. Um, having such a long spell off, there's certainly, you know, it's, it's that push and pull scenario, making sure that we push hard enough and that he pushes hard enough to get to that true fitness and, and Premier League fitness. But obviously just being a little bit careful with the nature of his injury, um, as much as the medical team looking after that side of things. But I think you do it in layers, you know, when it, when he's there and then we go, right, OK, and then we start looking at him pushing forwards, as you're suggesting, pushing to almost make it his his zone where he's going to play and he's going to build and he's going to grow into the Premier League with, with Everton. You know, that's certainly what he came here for. Um, he's got some good players there as well, some very experienced players we know and some good players. So it's not just let's flick your, uh, click your fingers and it all works. You know, it's, there's a bit of work to be done, that's for sure. But first things first, to get him totally fit and clear-minded because he's, he's had a tough run at it with this injury and it's, it's not easy though. And Deli Ali was linked with a move to Syria earlier this week. Is there anything, any more on his future? Or? No, I said, I know. Thanks, Will. We'll go to Carl at the Press Association. Hi, Sean. Just one more on Jared. I think that there was been an underlying feeling all season that once he's back in the team, you know, things will be okay. But I'm just wondering, is that too much sort of expectation and responsibility to put on his shoulders? Well, whether it is or it isn't, people make that story. That's just the way it goes. And I think he's, he's rounded enough to know that. Um, but there's uh, 10 other players out there at any given time working hard. And I thought they worked hard around him on Saturday because he's still getting, you know, getting back to true fitness. Um, yeah, I, I don't think, uh, you know, I know I know him well enough to know that he's well aware of his teammates and what, what the importance of the group are. Um, yeah, I think, I think he's just, you know, there's a lot going on for him outside of what we do, you know, and, and it's not nothing to do with him, obviously, stories everywhere about him, but he seems pretty level and pretty, uh, pretty much just enjoying playing or getting back to playing, that's for sure. Thanks, Carl. Any further questions in the open section? Can I just ask Jack? Yeah. Can you just ask him? I'll say it anyway, I'll say it loud. So, um, Jack Dowling, your first team physical performance coach, has just completed. He is physically performing, he that's is, for sure. Just a touch, uh, 26 minutes every hour for 26 hours, £100,000. And he's in today as well. Yeah, can he go home early? And also, how proud are you? <laughs> no, amazing. Um, you know, what the effort he's put into raising um, funds and 
you know, obviously we know the, the, the story behind it from his family point of view. It's been incredible. Um, and this one again, you know, slightly more under the radar, this one, but it's been amazing. And the lads all found out this morning that he did complete it. A few of the staff done some bits with him. Um, I think Seamus was on his bike at midnight last night, going a, a bit with him and just trying to help him through it. But yeah, I mean, it, it, he's an incredible character for doing what he's done, um, you know, in the memory, uh, memory of his brother. So incredible, We're, but fantastic achievement again, that's for sure.